In an organization as vast and complex as the United States Army, there are many small units, little known or publicized, that perform important morale services for troops in the field. The Institute of Heraldry, an activity of the Adjutant General of the Army, applies the art of heraldry, born in the medieval age of chivalry. As the medieval knight was proud to be identified by his coat of arms in or out of battle, so the modern American soldier is proud to be identified by his unit insignia. The Institute of Heraldry helps perpetuate this ancient art. This is the Institute's home at Cameron Station, Virginia, on the outskirts of Washington. Here, a group of specialists with unique training, skills, and experience will, on request, design and develop a wide variety of heraldic devices for official agencies of the federal government. Coats of arms, shoulder sleeve insignia, DIs or distinctive insignia, decorations for bravery, campaign medals, badges for skill and proficiency, and other identifying devices. Any military unit may request the services of the Institute. It should supply full details on its history, mission, and traditions. The trained heraldic artist seeks to tell the unit's story with symbols and colors that are authentic as well as vivid and striking. His ultimate objective is to develop a design that will become a timeless part of the unit heritage. He will often go for authentication and inspiration to the small but unique library with its remarkable collection of ancient and modern works on heraldry. Some date back hundreds of years and are rare, invaluable examples of their kind. The artist works up a series of drawings as a basis for a finished painting. This is the distinctive insignia of the 56th Artillery, compared to its coat of arms. Now here is the description or interpretation of the blazonry. The crest commemorates the award of the Distinguished Unit Citation given the organization in World War II for Hurtgen Forest by the Hearst of Trees and the Arrow. The Trident and Torii allude to the Navy Presidential Unit Citation awarded the organization for action in Incheon during the Korean War. The shield is red for artillery. The searchlight beams and the winged projectile denote the character of the parent organization. Also, the winged projectile on the black sheath alludes to the motto, Night Hides Not, signifying that the night does not hide the enemy from the artillery fire of the unit. This painting goes to the requesting unit for comment. If it concurs in the design, manufacturer's drawings are made up six times the actual size of the distinctive insignia. Also, a painting of the actual size insignia, along with a color guide, goes to the manufacturer. All enamels must adhere to these standardized shades. The correctness of the specifications are the responsibility of the Institute's technical division. The specifications are extremely precise. In the case of an embroidered shoulder sleeve insignia, the exact stitch count is prescribed. However, if the heraldic device is three-dimensional, this may be a distinctive insignia, a seal, medal, or plaque. A different procedure is followed. The Vietnam Service Medal is a good example. From the original design, a large-scale model is made, which in turn produces a mold from which more plaster models can be cast. The technical division writes up specifications which go along with the original model to a developmental manufacturer, 
A galvano or copper-plated version of the plaster model is produced. From the galvano, a hub is made, which reduces and reproduces the face of the metal in its exact dimensions. Dies are made from the hub. A master die is kept permanently by the institute. Metals are struck from the die. They are annealed and trimmed until they produce a satisfactory result like this. Sealed samples, specifications, and hubs are forwarded to the Defense Personnel Support Center in Philadelphia to be utilized in procuring the issue items. The Institute of Heraldry is responsible for the quality control of all optional purchase heraldic items sold through PXs and commercial outlets. Thus, the Institute does not do any manufacturing directly. It provides the tools and maintains constant quality control of the product. The only exceptions are in the case of the President and the Vice President for whom the Institute makes seals for display. For example, as seen on the presidential jet planes like Air Force One, and the President's helicopters. The Institute's skills and experience are widely used throughout the armed forces. It now does much of the Air Force's heraldic designing. Civilian organizations within the government also turn to the Institute for guidance. The Heraldic Institute designed the seal for the Federal Aviation Agency. But it is with the fighting man and his organizations that the Institute of Heraldry, U.S. Army, is chiefly concerned. The significant events that mark the history of the armed forces are reflected in its heraldic devices. Here, for instance, is the new shoulder sleeve insignia for the 1st Signal Brigade, Vietnam. The 44th Medical Brigade, Vietnam. The 1st Field Force, Vietnam. But no matter how complex the weapons and tactics of war become, the motives and ideals that inspire the fighting man and which his heraldic devices proudly display to the world have not changed from those of his knightly predecessors of nearly a thousand years ago. Honor, duty, courage, and pride in his unit.